going on, everybody? Welcome to the Gamers for Life podcast, where we're going to talk that, sh- that gaming shit uh, any way that we can, any time that we are able to uh, here. So a little bit of a delayed episode. I haven't had an episode for a couple of weeks here, but we are back and we're going to be talking about all that shit. We've got a lot to talk about. First and foremost, one more of your host, Terrell. With me is my co-host, Arthur Thomas. What's good, bro, bro? Not that much. Just been seeing some uh, clips of a recent West Coast concert come through my feed, and I'm here for it. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. They're not like us five times. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that did happen on Juneteenth. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. I had to bury that. that um, yeah. so, did you go? Uh, I didn't get to go, but um, uh-huh. I, it's funny because I was... I wasn't even able to see it on Prime. I had to see it afterwards, sort of snips on Instagram and and shit. But that looked crazy. That looked crazy as far as they bring bringing everybody out. And Academics was freaking out when like he saw like uh, Russell Westbrook, Westbrook. <laughs> dancing yeah. and shit. <laughs> and then Maybe. oh, and then LeBron was there, and then his wife wanted to go, and he, he was like, "You're from, uh, you're not from LA." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, You're not like them, honey. It's okay. That was hilarious. <laughs> I'm, mixed, I'm mixed on that. I'm not the biggest LeBron fan, but I'm like, you know, in that moment, he's brought a championship to LA. Man, let him on this fucking stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, him not letting his wife on is fucking hilarious to me. But uh, of course, we got Church here with us. Uh, what's going on, bro? Uh, nothing much, man. Just uh, gaming. Finally caught up on Final Fantasy 14. You know, for the week before the TLC comes out. So uh, I, I beat the game. Fantastic. Um, they they stuck the landing, my guys, from, you know, uh, Realm Reborn to Endwalker. Oh, my God. Masterful. Wait, I, you bought, you beat Final Fantasy 14? 14, yeah. There's an ending? He, he caught, <laughs> no, he caught up on all the expansions. Oh, All the expansions. Okay. So <laughs> I was like, holy shit. Up. The story that they started at the very beginning concluded in the la- this last expansion. Mm-hmm. It's over. So the new expansion is a new story. Everything, all the mysteries that we had since the very beginning have been resolved. And then some. It's It was fantastic. Chef's Kiss. One of the best game experiences I've ever had. My God, the writing was so good. I, man. This sh- yeah, it was emotional. The music was amazing. There's so many iconic stuff um you know from the game i have i mean i introduced the game to some people and they beat the game too and they ended up getting a tatted on the arm man this game is a serious wow. contender yeah so it's a one of the best stories in video games i think i've ever experienced yeah without a doubt um and now i'm excited for the doc so that's what i've been doing so i'm just prepping for that to come out this later this week on friday and then you know i'm back at it again you know not going to rush through it but just you know i'm going to do the first week with all the fans you know get into a city where there's like millions of people online at the same time so it's gonna be fun yeah yeah i was wondering how you're gonna fit that in with the elden ring uh dlc release <laughs> um elden ring i had to put on the back burner bro yeah. i had to make it just it was a tough decision bro it was because i had the homies like yo we got to get back in elden ring to play the dlc because I, I play that game cooperatively um but i knew you know miyazaki and from software like you know you say dlc but i'm sure that's another hundred hours right there you ain't gonna fool me right <laughs> you know at this point and um i bought it um because i'm ready for it but not until maybe like august I'll, I'll take a look at it but it's it's too much too much time bro um you know and plus, and I got- yoshi, i'll say sorry control i'll say yoshi p kind of give you a heads up on the t- on the timeline you had to get through, yeah. to get to get through the final fantasy 14 before elden on their so Elden Rings drops one week <laughs> to can, do it. Can yeah. you mention that? Can you mention that that legend? And I I already call it a legendary clip. If you're not if for people that aren't familiar with it, can you go over that little synopsis of the clip I'm talking about. I uh, yeah, I mean, I uh, Yoshi P was just he's on stage giving his presentation for when Dawn Trail is going to release. He's like, we're going to release it July second, and we wanted to release it sooner. He said. But then there was like Elden Ring DLC. So he's like, you guys have one week to beat the DLC. Then I'll see you in my game. <laughs> and as he should, man. Um, awesome. I'm curious because the last time the expansion broke, I think we talked about it on the podcast, was they had to stop selling it. It was too damn successful. It was like, yo, our servers are packed. We had to stop selling the game. And I, I think that is like 
what we've been talking about on this podcast for years, the quality of the game or the fans of service world, you get to a point where you have to take the product off the shelf. That That's an insane feat. Um, and they're doing a lot of mitigation this time around to make sure that doesn't happen again in terms of being able to support all the fan base. They have like quote unquote dummy servers that you can go play on, but they're not going to be permanent. So even though you can't get into for the log, long queue times you can go to a different world and database and still play the game so they're doing they're doing amazing stuff man i can't wait yeah very cool very cool well if you're watching us uh hello be sure to like and subscribe here on the channel for at g4l podcast that is where you're going to find everything game of your life related at g4l podcast that is where arthur does the streams for what he wants to stream which surprisingly folks i don't know if you know about this diablo 4 is back in his good graces for some reason um did you want to have a, a quick uh, few minutes just to talk about what's changed arthur yeah you can talk about yeah. how josh was right you know this is the beginning of <laughs> <laughs> you just want to throw that out there the no. title is just called josh was right sometimes I Fuck out josh here. Was right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I still don't. I still don't applaud people for giving me a plate up, for giving me a steak, and then two bites in, they take the steak, they st take the steak away, and then after I had my dessert, they put the steak back and they want, a, they want, you know, a, you know, a fucking standing ovation. Like, no, I don't. No, that's not how that fucking works. So, so they, so the the game drops. Let me phrase I mean, it. Before the game drops, change, but... before the game drops, they did the they did the early early access a beta via a chicken sandwich through KFC. And then they had the week later, they had the public, um, the public beta for, for everyone, which we all did. Um, both you guys went, both you guys went Druid. I want to say during that beta, cause you guys had the bear guy, which makes me think it was, were you, were you guys, wait, were you guys, were you guys, no, you guys were barbarian. I was a, yeah, I was a, I was I was a barbarian. My, my bad. My, my, my yeah. character's archetype is like a recovering meth addict. I just remember you guys as being like a bulky, huge dude. So I just, I mixed up my bulky, I just, huge dudes. I wanted all the steroids. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Yo. <laughs> I was big gravy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Fucking big gravy over here. <laughs> Can't spell barbarian without TRT. But, I mean, so I'm playing the Minion Necromancer during the beta. It was fun. It was enjoyable. And then the game comes out. And all sense, like, my minions are, like, they're made of, like, paper mache. It's like everyone was killing them. And... And it sucked because all the recommended builds for a minion necromancer, because there's different passes in the game where like your minions attributes are based off yours. So people are saying, oh, instead of using a two-handed weapon or two or using a main weapon and an offhand offensive weapon, they're just saying just use a shield to go more defensively to you know keep your minions alive more. And I'm like, well, that's not one, that's not how I want to play. And two, you know, that's that's not really like a solution. They just nerfed a bunch of stuff. So I stopped playing. Um, I stopped playing the game. I think like a week, maybe two after season one dropped. I never actually played this season. I never actually made a seasonal character, but that just gave me time from the last time I was playing. And then three seasons later, um, everyone's like, oh shit, they just fixed a lot of stuff. They rolled back on a ton of stuff. There was a couple of quality life issues. And, and it was almost like a troll. Like, like even like all like a lot of known Diablo players and Diablo streamers were like, no, this isn't a sponsored partnership. I'm not being ironic. It's it, it's fun again. Like it was just like they were like, no, believe me. And I did it, and I went back. And I'm like, oh my god, my minions aren't dying. My minions are fucking dying. And now they're not. And I'm playing the game. I'm playing the story for the first time. Um, one thing I've mentioned before. Uh, I put about. I'm going to say like 30 hours. I got I got two characters to level uh, level 45 plus. So I put time into the game. But I play Diablo like I play every open world RPG. Like, Joel, you know this. When I play Far Cry, when I play Skyrim, you give me an open world game, I'll do the prologue of the story and then everything else for weeks, like real time. Like, like Joel, you remember Skyrim? The dragon attacked Whiterun. The world finds out you're a dragonborn. Yeah, I didn't talk to those graybeard motherfuckers for like a month. Like it took me, it took me like 30 days real time to climb up before I decided to climb up that mountain. So that's what I did with Diablo. I treated Diablo as like an open world game because it is an open world game. But now that I'm playing the story, I'm like, oh shit, the story is like really the story is really good. And 
Um, for the handful of players that either game back in Diablo or they're going to Diablo for the first time, I don't want to spoil it because for a necromancer like me that's been playing Diablo since Diablo 2, um, the tail end of Act 1 is heavily based off necromancer lore and all of the characters we've been hearing about for you know since diablo 2 so the fact we actually see some of these characters and and you know they're not just another random logbook fucking somewhere was crazy and i was like oh my god it's that guy i've heard this guy since you know i've heard this guy forever because they just necromancer lore and so they see the game have at least the end of act one around necromancer it was just so fun and the thing is, normally with a game that has this that's that had this many improvements, you would think there's been a ton of quality of life issues and just other mechanics. This one's actually flipped. There's only like minimal quality of life issues. It's just all the other gameplay stuff they they made. I don't know how to describe it. It's like all like the nerfs they did. It's like they just hit control Z. They just hit undo to, to like all the all the nerfs. It feels like it's beta necro mini necromancer again. I'm having fun, I'm killing shit. My minions are staying alive. Um, there's new legendaries in the game. The new legendaries are way better than the fucking old ones. The aspects are so much better. Um, I feel like I have a couple collectible items because when I loaded the game, every piece of armor I had had that red asterisk. Legacy item, legacy item, legacy item, which means it's no longer in the game. Like, if I get rid of it, I can never get it back. So it's just almost funny that I have, like, these like 90 percent of the items i had when i turned out games like just don't exist in the game anymore so i'm having fun having fun looking for, i'm actually gonna be playing more today very cool very cool you heard it here folks be sure to stream that sucker on the geo4l <laughs> youtube here and uh, of course be sure to subscribe uh and here at the gamers for life podcast uh we read the news while you can watch or listen to what you choose but click on the link of the time code within the description of the episode so you can go to the certain part of the story or the video that you care about uh or you can just hang out with us here at the gamers for life podcast and we're doing a little bit of a makeup homework here and what i mean by that is we're going to have our comments talking about the xbox showcase and it's funny arthur We've had this conversation a while ago. Remember when, uh, in the U2 church, you were on that episode too, actually, uh, where we found out that Xbox bought Activision. And one of the one of the things that we were talking about, we are like, their E3 is going to be fucking amazing. And they're Same. just like, big dick on the table. Look at all these games. Fuck out of here. I'm the best. I, 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 you know what I mean? So it's like, it's almost like they finally had that moment, finally. Like, like Xbox finally had the moment where it's like, oh, by the way, here's all this stuff that's coming out, right? Yeah. Because before that, we were all kind of waiting for that moment. We we're like, yo, what's going on? Like, all we're hearing about is layoffs. Like, what about all this? I, these IPs and the content and the studios that are working on this stuff? Like, I thought you guys had mad stuff available. Like, what's going on? And, I mean... It surprised me, you know, and I've been very vocal about how negative I've been around Microsoft recently, but it, it was, you just can't deny, like, how great that showcase was. Just, oh, by the way, here's this, here's this, here's this, you know, I was right when they first, the first thing they showed was Call of Duty. Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, no apologies. But as far as, like, I mean, we all, we all named a lot of stuff that actually showed up in the fucking showcase, you know what I mean? Like, you're just like, man, I want... I won't say it to K3, boom, you know, uh, I know Church mentioned a few things that showed up in the fucking thing, you know, and, um, you know, I know Gears of War, I know they're going to do the E-Day shit, you know, which is was still dope, you know what I mean, I was like, that might be their main, their main thing, you know, um, but, I mean, the main, the for me, the main thing against, uh, or the main uh, detractor would be, just like more hard hitting release dates, which we we actually heard some of them after the showcase. You know what I mean? Like I think the avowed release date they didn't just say until after or something like that or whatever it was. But goddamn, that was fucking crazy. So of course I'm gonna start with you, Arthur. Uh, thoughts on the showcase? Uh well, one thing that I, I will say this: I think it made the showcase a little bit better is because I think we did something that we all, to a point, used to do when E3 was truly a thing. Which is you watch it live with your friends. So that's what happens. So for context, we were all in a part. We were all in a party. Um, we were all in a party. We were watching it on our own. You know, you know, watching it. I think we all. I think we were all watching it through the official Xbox YouTube channel. Um, 
I was a few seconds ahead, so I unintentionally like by like ten seconds spoiled a few things. Like Arthur, you just gotta react, but don't say shit. I'm like, okay. So for like half an hour, I was just like, oh, oh, ah, you'll see. Uh. Get in town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I was like, oh, Trish, you like this? Why? Ah, oh, you'll see. It's like, it. um, yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't have any, I mean, I don't know what hasn't already been said about this amazing, the amazing, the amazing thing. I'm curious to get churches because, like I said, I know, because I know Daryl, you know, you and I have been watching E3, you know, you and I have been watching E3, E3 for years, including the year where I discovered Voodoo Rangers are, in fact, a double. Um, and uh, it was a while, it was a while back since I was invited back to your house. So I was walking back in the house after that day. Like, oh, uh, this is, uh, this is not a four and a half. This is a nine. Oh, my bad. <laughs> You're still family, Arthur. It's fine. <laughs> I, I know. Like, there was, there was, yeah, there was a couple of like, I've only been through like three. Oh, uh, but yeah, man. But yeah, man. Sure. Uh, yeah. I know to a point, like church, I forget if he was taking notes, but he was definitely like church was a guy that was like, oh, yep. We called that. We called that. We called that. It was just so fun for more than for many reasons, but it it was fun. I can say, add the Xbox showcase to another long list of things we got right, or things we predicted. Um, yeah, overall view, you know, in this replacement of E3 season, clearly Xbox One. Once again, I feel like Xbox is still with the. They've had a lot of flack, but I still feel like X, Xbox is the only one that like comes to these these June showcases, ready to fucking present. You know what I mean, like. Games, uh, not GameStop. PlayStation did a city play. Nintendo did the Nintendo Direct, which are more the routine things, whereas Xbox had the proper showcase. And you're right, Drell. When this, like, it feels like that $69 billion dog finally got let off its leash. Because that was the first thing everyone said when this was announced. This was originally, this deal was supposed to be finalized by like June of 2023 or June 2022, whatever the year was. And like us and a million people said, holy shit, this is going to be finalized by June. That E3 is going to be fucking amazing. And holy shit, it was. It was just, it was just so fun. And, and again, I, again, I'm the type of guy where you can even watch the worst movie, but it's better with a bunch of friends. So just having, having you guys in my ear too, like, oh, there's that. Oh, it was just, it was just like the gold base. <laughs> yeah, man. Cherish your thoughts. Yeah. I mean, this was. I think Arthur's kind of selling it short. It's probably one of the best showcases that's ever been seen. I find very few moments since I've started watching E3 where things have been this, you know, amazing to watch in terms of the pacing, the presentations. There's not too many corporate heads talking so much. It was just the games. And boy, this is what I signed up for Xbox's generation for. This was finally like, hey, we're going to bring the games. We're going to bring it on Game Pass day one. And we're just going to feed you content over content. So this was finally Microsoft finally executing what they're going to bring to the table. And they, and they, I can't even say they unloaded the entire clip, but they definitely let off shots. Everything that I thought was not going to be the the Fable twos, the perfect docs, they they showed up. Even Gears of War Six showed up, and it's just I realized going forward that Microsoft just has the games. Like every complaint that people were saying about Microsoft for years has been addressed, um, and I, I think we got to ex tip our hats to that to them. They said they don't have any games; they have all the games now, right? All the games are first person shooters. There's an array a different type of variety of games that they're showing now. They even have RPGs games. The Expedition 33 is the most exciting RPG I've seen in a long time. They just killed it and knocked it out of the park, without a doubt. Um, I think some of the criticism was about the release dates. I mean, I, I think 2024, like, may, do they get pushed back? I, I don't know. But then, like, do we want the game to be released when it's ready? I do. I mean, we did get plenty of release dates. We got two Game Pass games coming out next month in July, on July 18th. And then afterwards, where people said, like, well, we wanted to see more gameplay. You know, I, I was watching some YouTubers. They're saying, that, oh, this was not a good conference. Do you guys know how these games play? It was just some bad rhetoric going on. Excuse me. But the entire week following up after that conference were deep dives. Arthur in our group chat, deep dive about Avowed. They did the same thing for um, this RTS call, strategy game. I, call, I forget. They did call it, uh, call it Call of Duty had a deep uh, Call of Duty uh, Black Ops Six had a deep dive. Age of Mythology had a deep dive, which that was one of the last few PC games I've ever I, I personally played. So I'm glad that had a deep dive. Again, there was a 
there's multiple deep dives falling and almost all of their big hits had it. I think Fable had I think Fable had one. I yep. think Fables was more of like an interview than a deep dive, but we still got but if you're like itching for anything all anything more fable, you got it. Um and uh, yeah, like the fact they followed up with, they followed the again, the fact they had follow-ups for like all their big hits were huge were huge massive. Yeah, it's it was just more than what uh, PlayStation's ever done. I mean, PlayStation, like, sometimes have limited games. We only talk about four games that we're going to do for, like, 30 to 40 minutes because they got nothing else to show, right? I'm not, and those games are not necessarily bad, but Xbox gave you the bangles after bango, you know, of, like, that slideshow presentation. And then they gave you an extra fix to feed the media circuit for the entire week. Um, I think they brought the A game. I think... You know, the entire team did what they were supposed to do, especially coming off of the the tail beginning of the year had. I mean, the layoffs, the movement to multi-platform. It just it was a lot of questioning about the Xbox uh, brand that people have. Um, I don't have anymore because I, I just accepted what they're going to do. Um, but I, I think this answered my questions in terms of Game Pass. You know, I, I look at Xbox as a service. What, I'm get, what am I getting to? from the service for the next 12 to 18 months. And I got a shit ton. This was the epitome of say less, show more. Yes. Like, like there was no lizard people. There was no corpo speak. There was no, wow, what do you think of this? Oh, this new Forza game looks muy bueno. There was just boom, flintlock, boom, this game. Boom! Say it okay. Bam! <laughs> just fucking everything. It was such, it was such a good, such a good fun showcase. Um, I remember I fucking I was trying to cook some food before the showcase. I got a late start to it. I burned some food while I was watching the showcase. I don't give a fuck. My burnt chicken was being you know, worth it what to watch the fucking some of those drops they had. Yeah, definitely. Um now as to not to play devil's advocate, but I guess some of the you know, we we're, we're, we're familiar with uh when we're being uh when we when we get a really nice announcement and then when we're being lied to <laughs> and then no. what's potentially like what's going on you know even phil spencer you know he he, he had a couple of he had a couple of, of uh situations where he, he had to admit a couple of things like well you know, yeah yeah that was, yeah that was bc footage yeah um to with that how much of this is is pc footage and not actual xbox gameplay can i say that, something as a console guy I don't, that? Mm. I don't care. Mm. I don't care. I, I don't care if it was console or PC. Like, mind you, I lean more towards, you know, I I lean more towards, I'd rather have a beautiful game at 30 frames a second, which is rarely a setting we can pick on consoles, or, you know, but for the PC players that want the AK at 120 frames a second, let them figure that shit out. But for us console players that are just, like, watching this game, how how good it's gonna look? It's it's still gonna look good on the Xbox. It might look even more polished, even more better, even more better on a PC. So because I don't play on PC too much, because I don't have you know like the you know a big monitor, because it's like it's almost for me from the outside looking in, it's like if you have a good monitor but on a good rig, then why do you have a good monitor? Or vice versa, if you have a good rig, why don't you have a good monitor? Well, I'm just sitting here. I'm just sitting here like, yeah, this shit looks great on my fucking Vizio. I don't give a fuck. So. When it comes to the when it comes to like the whole this was shown on this was shown on PC and it wasn't shown on console, to me it's not the biggest to me it's not the biggest thing in the world because a lot of the games also had art styles to them and when when you have the art style go step away from the hyper realism, it allows it to look good like not Flintlock, um what's that Louisiana game South of Midnight or something like that, that's a very mm -hmm. art style looking game so I think again that's another thing where it's like that sixty frame that you know sixty frames four K might not be as noticeable to a console player compared to the pc friends you know will it be yeah but it's not gonna be a game breaker um there was another game like avowed kind of has if not an art style to it but again avowed's not like hyper realistic like let's say like dragon's dogma like at face value right now dragon's dogma 2 i think will look better than avowed but i'm again for someone like me i'm okay with that so when it comes to the whole were they honest or did or is it weird they didn't show oh this is being recorded on pc or this is being recorded on xbox i don't I'm not, I don't really care either way. Yeah, did they, did they mention what games? I, I guess I might have missed that um, segment. Was it all footage PC on the showcase? Um, I think the majority of it was. Typically, the ones that they would show, it would have like a, some type of a disclaimer on the bottom where it would say, like, oh, like this is, uh, 
this is all like gameplay footage or, you know, but if they don't show anything, it was kind of assumed as far as like, okay, this is PC. This isn't, this isn't, uh, shown on an Xbox. Um, yeah. So my thoughts are it, this leans more to what I think Xbox's ultimate goal is now, right? Is game pass is a service and they want you to buy a PC, right? Um, they say they're still making hardware for the people. I think that's just, you know, corporate speak. We've already did the investment to sell you new hardware, so we need to say that we're doing it so we can make our money back. But I think ultimately they want to move to PC. I'm, I am disappointed because um, I want to know, I want to see the experience that I'm going to get on console, right? Show me what I'm going to get on console. And I think the games have not been living up to the standards on both PlayStation and Xbox. PlayStation... Not so much because they've been the games look beautiful, especially Ragnarok and Horizon Two looks fantastic. But it's also limited by the old generation. They were all made for PS4, and they both look great on PS4. I want to see the next generation. Show me why I invested into the system. I think Xbox needs to own it that these are their games and show them on their consoles. Show them that they're being optimized, not necessarily at like plan op obsolescence on playstation but is the new cycle you know six months from now when call of duty 6 comes out that it plays better on playstation than an xbox ha 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 xbox can't do anything right like these are headlines that writes itself right xbox needs to get in front of it show us what it can look on uh, xbox games and these are the place you want to play and you know not have it diminished by other games that are going multi-platform it's just it's not good. Show me the games on what I'm gonna play. Give me sixty frames. So I I agree with you. I agree with you, Church. I think that's that's my concern, right? Is because you know, when it comes to history as far as for when games were shown on PC, typically the initial indicator was okay, this is showing either one what hasn't been really developed yet, or how behind they are, or how, you know, maybe they're potentially behind versus what is being shown. I don't think they're super behind, but I do agree with you as far as they need to get behind, you know, in front of that messaging as far as like, this is Xbox console, you know, gameplay play footed system stuff you know i think that is an important uh that's an important thing for the console and uh i think as far as the releasing of hey we're gonna have all these discless you know versions of the xbox series x to me that shows that that makes me think okay how much of these games are actually going to be available via cloud versus via console and via pc because we know when it comes to call of duty those games were fucking huge as far as for the install size. There was a rumor about being 300 gigs and then they debunked that. They said it's not that much as far as for the install base. Um, but, you know, we're talking about the initial download. We're not talking about the updates, right? But as far as for the downloads, these games are going to have a significant download size because it's, you know, the, the, these are the, these type of games are going to, they're just going to have that naturally, right? So there's going to be a lot of shuffling going on. You know, I think just one of the messaging to me, they kind of said, uh, just kind of like whispering in your ear saying, buy a fucking hard drive. <laughs> you know, or if you don't have a system, buy the fucking terabyte SSD, you know, buy the terabyte one, you know. Um, and uh, I'm cu I'm very curious how the Series S is going to survive over the years. I'm incredibly impressed how long that system that they're really, they're, they're going all in on it. You know what I mean? There was even a survey that said the majority of Xbox players have the S over the X. That's very interesting. You know, so... Um, but I agree. We need to, they need to, they need to show their nuts as far as like, okay, this is the power from the console for series X. This is what's going on. Uh, after watching the showcase, I didn't necessarily want to buy a console, but I was absolutely considering subscribing back to get to game pass because it's like, okay, these games are going to be available. And then to your point, to everyone else's point, that synergy of PC and console is finally coming together. And it seems like the majority of these games will also be on PC as they've stated at the end of a lot of those trailers. Right. So I'm like, yeah, fuck it. I mean, you guys want me back as far as being a game pass subscriber. I won't subscribe until the game, the game, one, one of those games comes out and it's on game pass or whatever. And then I'll fucking pay my $17 or whatever the fuck it is. But um, to me, after the trailer, or after all the, the conference, I said, I might need to upgrade my video card. You know what I mean? So I, I, may, need to, I may need to save uh, 
save 300, 300, 400 bucks and upgrade my video card. It'll be good for another eight years. You know, I'm like, well, that's worth it. I already have 32 gigs of RAM already on this because I thought Battlefield 2042 was going to be a good game. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess that otherwise. didn't happen. <laughs> Oh, that's right. I was telling you otherwise. No. <laughs> yeah. Because the Prime was like, you know, what do you get 32 games? I'm like, yeah, you're right. You know, walked over to Best Buy, installed that shit. You know, and then, and then that bullshit happened. But um, those are my main qualms. But as far as for the experience, dude, it's like, yo, it's, it's your fucking move, Sony. And uh, after that, y'all need to come up with some better dance moves because <laughs> Microsoft for- killed it on the floor. Even for the games that weren't console exclusive, like I still can't believe one thing I kind of like half guessed, right? Or I did, or I was like, wouldn't it be crazy if the fucking Snake Eater? I was like, hey, because I even asked you guys, like, hey, wasn't Snake Eater that was debuted at the Sony conference, right? Yeah, wouldn't it be crazy if the next one is like, they should we get more shit at the Xbox showcase? And lo and behold, and like I said, I was 10 seconds ahead and I heard my ears heard a voice and I went, oh. And Joel's like, what's that? I'm like, nah, you'll know. And I immediately all of a sudden just like, three, two, one. Is that David Hater? <laughs> like, I forget his name. But when Joel shouted it, I'm like, yeah. I was like, okay. Well, the David second Hater. I heard, the second I heard, um, Snake, you know, Snake's voice, I was like, okay, Joel's back in. That's a, that's actually a really good segue. Um, unless, did you have anything else to say about uh, Xbox Church? I mean, yeah. Um, well, let's see here. Um, I didn't I didn't know if we were going down the list of games, but um. Let's see. Just surprised by everything they've done. I, Bethesda really showed up for all the Starfield DLC, Doom coming out. Um, that that was amazing. I think that's going to be a big win for Doom everybody. Doom was that was one of the yeah. that was one of the craziest uh, announcements. I was like, "Ooh, that looks good." <laughs> I, it, it's insane. Then we got a glimpse at Perfect Dark too. Is um. That that looks pretty good to me. It's it's Crystal Dynamics. It looks like I'm getting the Deus Ex sequel that I always wanted, and I'm happy with that. Uh, I heard some chatter in the on the online. I'm like, oh, they wanted it to be something different. I'm like, ah, give me Deus Ex again. It, it's fine. Um, you know, we we finally seeing videos and the progression of everything they announced and there's some games they announced last year that didn't show up again this year so it's more exciting for what's to come i mean i don't know if halo's a thing anymore but they've still got halo under their belt right they still got the clockwork games they could yeah they just got the games they they own american gaming <laughs> basically right in terms of stuff and i i think they're going to continue to deliver uh against that there are things that I was surprised not to see. I mean, I don't think these are like negative stripes against the showcase. It's just the timeline of the integration of, you know, ABK into the Game Pass services. When are we going to get these old Call of Duty games or Activision games? Like how they, when, or if any, are they going to be uploaded to that service? Um, That wasn't talked about enough. Um, Some insight of some hardware. Um, uh, Nothing too exciting though. We kind of discuss it. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Are we missing anything from the, uh, um, like some of the, some of the biggest, uh, just things as far as for the, the showcase. I mean, obviously, uh, the Gears of War E-Day, you know, the yeah. going back, I think is, is really smart. Um, there's a lot of mixed messaging or not mixed messaging, but just mixed thoughts on Gears of War 5. I thought Gears of War 5 was great. Yeah. Um, but I think going back to the E-Day, you know, and having Marcus Phoenix kind of be on the cover again. I think it's really smart, um, and uh, I'm excited to play Gears of War again. This period, you know, even if it's a prequel, so I'm very excited for that. Um, the deal, the, the the that Diablo trailer, that Diablo trailer was, that was crazy. Gory. <laughs> I was not expect when they zoomed, Ooh. when they showed, when they showed, when they showed her like crying in pain. Yeah, I was like, oh man, she's having a bad day, and I'm like. Oh, where'd her limbs go? Right. That's she's not. I was yeah, like, right. I forgot how gory those Diablo cinematics can fucking go, dude. Bro. Like, I no. forgot when Diablo 4 was announced, it was like her wings, her draped wings were formed from the skin of those three dudes. And I'm like, oh, fuck, this is Diablo. Shit. Right. Dude, it's insane. And now you're playing the story, so you, you know who the character is. I know who she is. Show- I just I just talked to her <laughs> mom. Spoiler. Right <laughs> like, I'm, not, I'm, not far in, I'm not far in at all. That's like Spoiler. the second, like, yeah. like the third mission, by the way. So okay. Yeah. It's like an early thing. I think we did it in the beta. So. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, man, it's just it was a great showcase. I guess before we move on, I just uh, Xbox killed it. I'm just waiting for PlayStation. Um, I have the same critique for PlayStation I had for years. I've been saying it all the time is I don't know what's coming out on the consoles. I don't think they're in a bad spot, but but like what is like this is two years where they just haven't had any games and it's kind of weird that i don't really see that coverage from john Mid journalism like when it comes to gaming like they don't talk about how playstation is not showing up but well, what are they doing like it's a blank year if they there's didn't a have lot of, there's too, a lot of media there's a lot of media bias to your point yeah a lot bro, of media bias it's insane it's a drought I, yeah yeah, because yeah, because and and especially because if we don't know, if we don't know, we're, we're going to constitute it as a drought. Where are these games, right? And then, as, as to me, it it showed that they did not, uh, they did not think that Microsoft was going to drop what they dropped, or if they did, they're like, we're just going to try to double back in the second half. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, y'all dropped this state of play when they dropped this shit. You know what I mean? So it's just like, yo, I hope. Please tell me you guys have something else. And I think um, Hiroki uh, Tataku uh, Tadeku, I apologize, mispronouncing his second name, his uh, last name, but um, I feel like he's still cleaning up a lot of shit, you know. And I think he's just looking at these projects. Obviously, he has those two CEOs, um, you know, one more focused on like uh, the, the the back office of everything, and then one then you know focus on everything else in the front. Um, so I think he's still trying to set the pieces in place, but as far as for the games, obviously when it comes to blockbuster games, like we need to re-engineer what is the real branding of PlayStation because to me, when it comes to uh, indie, indie, like PlayStation used to have a really solid indie, like, you know, like presence, like a really strong fucking presence, you know? So I feel like they just need to incorporate everything good. Like, fuck this just blockbuster game bullshit. Just give everything good. You know, give the Samia games a break. <laughs> to I, your point. They can only carry you so far. Right. <laughs> you know, it's like not even LeBron can play all four quarters of a game, you know? It's like... Right. <laughs> it's just, it's a weird position, right? Because... The format for first party games coming for PlayStation has been we release the game and then a year like later is the DLC. They did the same thing with God of War, the Valhalla DLC, Horizon. Spider-Man 2 came out last year. No announcement about DLC for Spider-Man 2 coming in the fall. Um, a year later afterwards. It's just I like I'm wondering what's going on there. Maybe they left everything on the kitchen floor. Um, but I, 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 I doubt it, but just no announcement, nothing. So it's interesting. Yeah. Very concerning. Any lasting thoughts, uh, Arthur? Well, I got a few lasting thoughts and I want yeah. to just one question because of the topic you brought up. So again, with Xbox showcase, I mean, again, like there's this game, 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 like gameplay, fucking expanding everything we wanted. Again, I love, love, love that we had like Norcorpo, Norcorpo speak. There was no, the pacing didn't slow down because we're like, hey guys, let's dive into the game right now. Wow, John, these powers are super cool. Yep, thanks to the power of the new X Cloud, brought to you by blah, 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 I'm able to play this game. Oh no, Helga's been down. Don't worry, I have my revive system. So I'm just like, fuck. So <laughs> there was none of that. And so it was just gameplay. Like we saw gameplay, but again, it was just, you know, do more, uh, sorry, show, show more, say less. Um, I got my State of Decay 3, and that game looked to a point, it looked so crisp for a while. We were going back and forth. Wait, is this cinematic or is this gameplay? Is this cinematic or is this gameplay? And then once, like, the, the camera kind of, like, more stabilized over her shoulder, I'm like, that's gameplay? Because, again, I'm a playing State of Decay 1 and 2, so there is a sort of combo bookie, not full on, like... Like Telltale games, like Telltale's Walking Dead, Telltale's Batman, Telltale's War in Borderlands, they have like that art style with two. It's like almost kind of comic book. Yeah. State of Decay has that a little bit. So to see that like polished the way it was, that's where I was, you know, I played both games and I was like, fuck, there's gameplay. <laughs> like it's going to look like State of Decay 3, that gameplay is already leagues better, like leagues improved on from what State of Decay 1 and 2 were. 
Um, so I was ecstatic about that. Um, again, we saw characters dying, which spoiler, it's like, it's, that's common. It's just like, fuck, I lost, oh, we lost our medic. We lost our doctor. We lost our gardener. Like, God damn it. Who else could grow our fucking cord? Yeah. So, <laughs> like, and, he, built, he built a good goddamn house. God damn it. <laughs> yeah. So the, the, the mechanics said that the community mechanics and said, okay, make you feel attached to characters, even though there's no real main characters. It's a really different type of thing. So I was happy to get that. Um, a couple surprises. I was not expecting, I think Church, you know, we're talking about this because we were both like talking about the game when it first got announced. I was not expecting Flintlock to be a Souls-like game. Like that came out of nowhere. I'm not like mad about it. I was just like, oh, I, I was expecting Flintlock to almost be like that one kind of werewolfy Sony exclusive, like 1881 or Order 1886, whatever you mean like that. It was kind of like cryptic, um, cryptic, like uh, like mythology meets industrial evolution, but it was like a linear story game. So and I'm like, oh, okay, Flintlock's like, like a Souls like game. Was not expecting that at all. Um, there was another five v five hero based shooter. Um, but there's big head oh, yeah. mode, so there was big head mode, so that yeah. that made me a little happy. That brought back that retro feel um south the south of midnight i didn't i was not expecting to have that kind of claymation style that claymation style to it um it has a lot of big bow mechanics so i was looking forward to that but i mean yeah um and and i will say this as much as i was talking about diablo earlier it really was because of the new diablo 4 expansion coming out i'm like fuck and i kind of want to get in diablo because i really you know haven't played a true diablo story game since diablo 3 so again, knocked out of the park, best conference. My one last question before we move on, because Joel, you mentioned something, and Church, you're talking about too, is we don't know what's coming for Sony. And the thing is, Drill, one one of the many things that was under Jim Ryan's belt, not only was Jim Ryan really pushing these blockbuster games, but Jim Ryan to a point was like anti-showcase, or Jim Ryan to a point was just like not really going to be present in these issues. Remember, under Jim Ryan's belt, they PS5 day one sales killed 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 xbox and that next e3 gel even i as next Xbox guy i was saying that sony had all right to show up at e3 and you know f- and flex their shit of how much they were killing xbox and they didn't even show up at all so my question is now that we have these two new ceos do you think we're going to start seeing more actual conferences and actual more public follow-up than we saw under jim ryan um uh, i'll go ahead church you can answer this one yeah um no i actually don't um I think Sony as a company is it's culturally driven by Eastern, you know, culture. I, I think my, my my perspective of PlayStation, I'm gonna say Sony, is they've always been ambulance chasers when it comes to innovation in terms of the industry or trends. Um I think at this point they decided not to be as open in terms of showcase and they're not gonna deviate from that, which I think it's gonna walk against them i think there's some obligations like state of the play uh sh- showcases they have for the third party partners they would do but i think they're actually going to do it less um and then that's all we're going to get i think we'll get a random youtube video of a deep dive of like maybe spider-man dlc or the announcement of a wolverine but i, I don't think they're going to do anything not to the frequency they were doing um I think they will, but it'll be right before the holiday. <laughs> I think they're just gathering their chips right now. I do agree that that Sony are they they are ambulance chasers, and I still feel like they're still they're still figure they're still trying to reconfigure their brand as far as for like you know what type of content is being released, you know, because there's a whole. There's a whole shift. There's there are people that that had to free certain projects to work on other projects. You know what I mean under Jim Ryan. So I think now they're just trying to get some shit together. Um, I do think that if they do have a showcase, um, it's not going to be like Phil Spencer talking in front of everybody. I don't think people give a fuck about these two CEOs, and I think Sony think knows that as well. So I think they'd rather just have like a, a really nice sounding. Um, you know, uh, a, a voice actor saying, you know, hey guys, here's what's coming out for PlayStation or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, and then, you know, and they just start sewing some shit. I can see that more so. Um, but it's, to me, 
I feel like they almost have, they almost borrowed some shit from Nintendo as far as like, we'll give you something where we got something going on, you know what I mean? It's just like, they just don't have much going on right now, so it's like, yeah, to be honest, we just don't have a whole lot of stuff right now. Things are in like alpha, or, or prior to alpha, right? So, but I think we will get something in, I'm going to say July, I'm going to say end of July. End of July, I think we're going to have a state of play, or they might even call it a conference if they're really risky. Um, like ASAP in a month? I think in a, I think in a month. Oh, or, shit. Yeah, I think in a month or in August. We're gonna Between those two months, we're going to get something from, 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 uh, from Sony. Because I think they just have to be realistic with themselves. They're not going to have as much stuff as Xbox because Xbox bought most of the, like, their fucking boardwalk. You know what I mean? Like, they got, <laughs> they got everything, you know? So, um, as far as for what's very specific to Sony... And then really encompassing on like some really dope uh, indies and then just like the big titles, you know, just show what they have going on, regardless of when they're coming out. That's a whole other conversation as well. Right. But um, we're going to we're going to hear we're going to hear that there's going to be a showcase between July and, and August. That's kind of my prediction there. Church is hearing this like you want to put a burrito bet on that. Yeah, no. <laughs> I think we had a we have a burrito bet out there. I feel like what really was the, somebody yeah. owes somebody something. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I feel like I feel like somebody owes me something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you might have to mail you a coupon or something. <laughs> I mean, I think that's very optimistic that Sony has shows something. I mean, yeah. I mean, maybe they got more Last of Us remakes to like you know to you know <laughs> to show us. You know, I think there was a rumor that we they were redoing Horizon, the first game, a remake with Horizon Two graphics. You know, really going the Nintendo route. You know, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, I mean, I'm I'm there for it. I would love to see Wolverine. You know, outside of the leaks footage that we've seen, so right. Um, the sooner the better. The more games. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm okay because you know with final fantasy 14 and xbox like my my calendar is packed in terms of games like uh this i i don't even know the next time i'll buy a game like to be right. honest with you gta 6 i, I don't know so, <laughs> yo oh, and even man. that even that one game on the show, in the xbox showcase that looked like zone of enders like you know how i'm like how oh, long I've been, or something like i've that? been waiting for a zoe itch for so long and i'm like right. that looks like fucking zoe i'm like no no, <laughs> no man. <laughs> I'll like, buy it. I was like, if it's on a game pass, I'll buy that shit. I was like, fuck, that is crazy. That shit looks good. That looks, you know, oh. that combat looked insane. Like, oh, bro, it's so like, it's good. Like, they're making everything that we wanted when we were kids, right? Like, wouldn't it be cool if we could just do the things that we watched to, like on shows, and now you can't? So. <laughs> yeah, god damn. I, yeah. I still stand on it that I do like I said I, I part of me does miss that five like a part of me misses like that cooperative but like PVE itch that Battlefield one used to scratch and that overfield that overfield Overwatch used to scratch so that's how I was telling church like do when it comes to Marvels or like hey if there is a free I don't gotta put money down game that I'll enjoy. I'm like and you just need a fucking you just need a healer or support just to keep you alive while we turn a 5v5 into a 2v5 and still kick ass i'm like i'm down and you know what i will say that mech bait that mech game is like maybe like 40 bucks max i'm like fuck i might jump in because that did look good that did look fun dude <laughs> look there crazy, is like a support right? there is a support mech i'm down because john if you remember when we played squadrons that support plane and squadrons oh i kept you motherfuckers alive like very <laughs> <laughs> like, called support <laughs> you remember i'll oh, real quick you remember you remember bacon would head dive into like head dive into their main fucking cruiser you just hear him screaming oh, we're diamonds with it. And i'm like here's a shield shut up stop screaming <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, man. He, he was always yeah. very immersed. I'm definitely down. I'm definitely down. Where, like, if you just throw a dart to the wall or you pick one, church, because I know you're always in the thick of it. If you find a good one that's like okay, free, you're like, you know, not 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 more than forty bucks. Like, dude, Arthur, just roll healer. I mean, this year, I'm like, I'm I that, that, that I do want to scratch the itch again. Yeah, dude. Um, I'm definitely gonna be on Marvel Rivals. Um, free free for you to join up. Like the homies are already talking about it. We all excited for it. Um, I'm checking out Valorant. I think that's a free to play game. Yeah, it, um, it is, but I, I won't join. I won't join you in that shit. Sorry, it's, it's not your CSS. <laughs> you're, gonna it's, pay, it's, you're gonna buy blue for two hundred bucks, Arthur. No, <laughs> um, no. When it comes, when it, I don't know, man. I'm still, I'm still off that riot. I'm still off that riot game shit for for. A really? Bit, so. Okay, okay. Well, I'm, I'm gonna give it a shot. It's free to play. I'm like, they don't gotta get no money from me. Um, is Rivals then, crossplay? Because that would be down to play with. Uh, with yeah, um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, There's, crossplay. If, 
there's no way do you all well, yeah because it, well, it, it was announced it, it was like i forget when it was announced but it was shown at the showcase to a point yeah 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 because yeah, because I, me- I remember arthur when originally i was talking about rivals and like it was just pc during the announcement and it was, was like, that early, like pre-closed beta thing. yeah and i was like who knows it'll be a causal version lo and behold a causal version shows up but i don't know if there's any indication as far as like yeah it's crossplay like if it is then i'm excited uh i may google it but honestly it if it's not, then it had no business not being at the Xbox showcase. Like that's Xbox's thing. It's like if we're showing you point. something, if we're showing you something, hey, Microsoft PC players and Microsoft Xbox players, your cousins play together, have fun. Okay. Um, yeah, and then I'm gonna get the robot game. I'm, I'm checking to see if it's crossplay right now. It is on PlayStation Five, Mac OS somehow. That's crazy. Yeah. So <laughs> with Microsoft Windows. Yeah, I didn't know like <laughs> Apple made like enough a system more powerful right dude, yeah dude, Matt's going crazy you put like, three iphones on your fucking <laughs> like, dude, computer dude, and like, turns into a gaming yeah, system what chip pro max or something like what the hell <laughs> um yeah that gaming piece gaming app about uh book would must be so expensive jesus um yeah yeah um i'm gonna get that concord game too they showed as well uh which I'm one try- sorry Concord, it's the people that made uh Destiny, one of the gameplay oh, developers. Yeah, 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 Concord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I'm I'm not willing to try that out. Just mm-hmm. I don't know. It, it seems uh, it seems a little bit you know fun to play, yeah. but then the mech game, I'm definitely I'm definitely gonna hop into that mech game. So yo, yeah. that shit looks wild, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a cool thing with now the mech game is on Game Pass. Wait, it's gonna be I think it's gonna it's not gonna be on Game Pass. So that's what I was saying. It's gonna be forty bucks. But everything else shown. Hey, again, welcome to the Game Pass. I might try this. Cool, you don't like it? You're not out seventy fucking dollars. <laughs> yeah, it's yes, well for money, man. I mean, as opposed to PlayStation, seventy dollars. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so Arthur, I know you you brought up uh, you know one of the big things as far as I, mean, I think I think your example was with GTA Six, but then I think we were talking about Snake Eater, and then Snake Eater happened uh, for Delta. Yep rather so originally i've had the original messaging as far as like okay like if you guys are just gonna take fucking snake eater and say here you go i'm fun you know like, I'm like okay fuck you guys konami i'm not doing this shit like you're not even respecting the game you know but it seems like the opposite has happened you know because first we saw david hater and i was like wait David fucking hater, David hater. You know what I mean? So it's like, I mean, that's been like my my voice acting hero ever since I've been alive. Like, there's there's Batman, there's Kevin Conroy, and there's David Hater. You know what I mean? Those like some of my favorite voice actors of all time. And they discussed really the the one on one real serious detail of really maintaining the same experience from the original game cuz you can switch between the original camera angles to more of a traditionalized third party third person view gears of war s behind the shoulder type of viewpoint you can even do which I was like that's interesting cuz some people really do like the original I'm kind of mixed, you know, like, like, like sometimes I like the traditional metal gear point and it's all like, can I just fucking like see behind myself so I can fucking shoot the guy? You know, like I was always mixed when I was playing the game. Uh, the biggest selling point for me was, uh, Naraki, uh, Okamura, uh, where they interviewed him and it was like a good, like 10 minute interview and, and snake was asking these questions to him and Naraki, he was, he was, he was working on the original game like 30 years ago. And he said, you know, there's a, there's still a good, there's some people that left obviously, but he said, there's still a good amount of people that have been there from the original game that are working on this. Um, which I found really interesting, you know. Yeah, and what have they been doing for years? Like jerking like, off? I don't know, bro. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, like what games have Konami put out? You know what I'm saying? Like, like what have they been working on? Like I'm so curious. Konami, Konami's, Konami's making them do God knows what. You know what I'm oh, saying? God. You're right. But I'll continue. My bad. Fair good. No, it's fair question. I don't know. You know, but uh, but yeah. Machines. Sorry, I was saying. Just reminder. <laughs> just reminder. When it comes to asking those Konami questions, there is technically an in in a cutscene on that fucking Metal Gear Solid Planko machine. So, some fucking how. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, as far as this, the real, the, the detail of everything, um, they're really trying to maintain that same experience to the T, you know. So, and, and the fact that Naraki really could vouch for it, I said, 
you motherfuckers. You guys put all the right chips on the table. You know what I mean? All the right cards on the table. Um, now I'm I'm interested in going for it and, and getting the Delta. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm actually finally excited to, to dive into it. Pardon me. They're, they're selling like the vinyl, like the, the soundtrack for the the vinyl of the, of the game. So I was like, Oh man, that'll be fucking tight. Oh God damn it. So I don't even know if there's some available left on the website, left on the website. I, Gina was selling like their version or whatever the fuck, but I want to go to the probably Konami site and, and get it before it's gone. Cause they had it for like the snake eater or like for like, even like the first game. I was like, Oh, I would love the vinyl of the first game. Um, but yeah, man. And then yeah, all the voice acting is the same is, uh, you know, is in, intensified or in the same, they're not redoing it like fucking snake eater. Like it's going to be the same type of voice. And so it was okay. I bet. Awesome. You know? So I'm excited. I'm excited. You know, Snake Eater, Snake Eater's never been my favorite Metal Gear Solid, but I knew the impact that it, it was making. I was like, okay, they're doing some stuff that's pretty awesome, you know, and it's going to change how uh, third per third person view uh, action games are, you know, and it, this is kind of like before fucking uh, Phantom Pain, right? You know what I mean? As far as like how that open world really is, you know, so pretty interesting stuff. But any uh, any thoughts from anyone? Yeah, what is your favorite MGS? Uh, the one on PlayStation, Mega Solid. Okay. <clears throat> Outer Heaven, okay, baby. Okay. Yeah, playing Solid Snake. So, um, obviously playing Big Boss on this one, obviously. Um, but uh, um, or Naked Snake, technically, right? <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, oh, I'm glad you get in the game. I mean, it looks cool. I, I think Phantom Pain is my favorite MGS game. Um. I, I just, I don't know. I think the gameplay in that one is just truly dynamic in the way you can approach in the open world stuff. But it, it would be nice to go back to the more traditional levels and, you know, handcrafted areas that you can go through. The game looks good. Uh, I'm glad there's some changes in terms of the camera angle just to make it feel different. Um, other than that, it, it, I think it would be fine. Um, I'm excited. I mean, to me... Um, Venom Snake's voice actor, Keanu Keith Sutherland, is the new voice for me in my head. I, I actually like him more than Hayden, but uh, so that's just that's just how it is, man. I, I, he's just is so great. This um, man's bringing Blast me to Joel's house. I mean, he did a fantastic <laughs> His five <job>. lines. <laughs> but, no, he didn't, man. Maybe fifteen, <laughs> bro. But they were impactful. Like I did every <laughs> every cutscene previously. Um, it was really good. Um, yeah. I don't know when I will pick this one up, if I will, but you got to let me know how it goes. You know, yeah. we finally do. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll definitely report back because there's so many goddamn games. Like, I don't blame you for not being able to play through this as everything else is coming out, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I'll definitely be, I'll definitely be the guy to, to I'll, I'll, I'll pay you know, I'll pay him. I'll I'll pay him the seventy bucks like for this game if I have to. You know what I mean? Because it's Metal Gear Solid and they're doing it justice. And and uh, and Okamura, dude. You know him doing that interview. I was like, okay, I'll pay the seventy bucks for you, man. <laughs> Do you watch anime? What chance? You know I don't. I've had, it's funny. I've had, I had this conversation with uh, um, a really good music producer, and I was just like, I just need to get into it, but I just like, I don't know which one to start out with, and there's like 500 episodes a fucking season. <laughs> I was like, I don't know which one to start out with. <laughs> I think you would like it, because yeah. well, Metal Gear Solid is one of your favorite game series, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the way I would describe anime, it's just Metal Gear Solid, bro. Hmm. Metal Gear Solid is anime as fuck. Yeah, like I won't be honest with you. <laughs> their cuts, dude. Their cutscenes <laughs> would never happen in real life. Like the epic movie-like dialogue while they're like fighting is yeah. like it's so that's that's so anime. It's like oh, we yeah. block punches. I'm gonna go on a 20 minute monologue about how world <laughs> politics and nuclear armament because you countered my attack yeah. just perfectly. It's like what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> this is amazing, but uh, but actually, what is happening? Right, and just the the story in the beats and the story. It's, yeah, it's anime <laughs> as hell, man. Um, I think yeah, I think you would really enjoy it um okay. it's just I, like <laughs> it's, um, if, you, if, if you guys have any recommendation you know anime recommendations to get into oh, it we'll, I mean, we'll, fl we'll flood the group chat but okay. again another example how medicare's anime oh. is like okay cool we have these giant robots right they're like the newest weapon tech great cool what's a what's a sound to make the menacing to enemy hear me out have you heard of a cow 
What? <laughs> Just roll with it here, okay? So these things can destroy a whole platoon. They can eat plant. They can eat tanks for breakfast. And if you thought a cow wasn't scary before, buckle a fuck up. Wow. <laughs> like I've never. I always game. thought of like a train of call this Rex. Because <laughs> like, yeah, the code name was Rex. So like, I always thought yeah. it was like fucking Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I was like, that's kind of weird, but I'm digging it. <laughs> Machine yeah, they, can go. <laughs> there's just there's just some things that like Belger saw in other games. Or you just have to be like, okay, this is anime. Okay, okay, there's this guy right. He's a super soldier. Okay, what's his thing? So bees, right? Like, yeah, that's him. What do you mean? Shut up. World War Three. <laughs> <laughs> right. Even vamp, you know, so where it's we like a vampire, vamp, right? Vamp, yeah, vamp, <laughs> vamp's, a, vamp's a dead giveaway. Oh yeah, yeah. he's super anime. Absolutely, I'm like this guy. Like this guy's kind of wild, you know. Raiden, like, yeah. just the name, fat the man naming conventions Black of the game, fight. dude. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Um, <laughs> it's like, there's, hey, what's one boss? An old guy that's a sniper. Cool, I can respect that, right? So this guy, he's uh, an actual fucking vampire. What? <laughs> we're moving on. We're moving on to the next slide. Questions after the presentation, please. Next slide, bees. What? Next slide. Mobility. <laughs> <laughs> just, she's just lucky. Like, <laughs> she... oh man. The intel uh, briefings yeah. for these missions yeah. must. Ben like, Pain is very regret. anime too. Yeah, as far Which as just one? like the whole like the whole like uh, you know that dude that's like lifted people in the air and shit and like they're Bro. trying to escape through the hospital. Yeah, it's like what the fuck is going on? Like I'm Bro. all for it. The Both whole guys. series told me. <laughs> Yeah. Like even the first yeah. game, you have Gray Fox, Psycho Mantis, <laughs> like these. Um, th yeah. this is not a negative stripe. I th I love no. Metal Solid stories. It's just that I can, you know, Kojima. I just, I just, I tell people if you haven't watched anime but you love Metal Gear Solid, like that the storytelling and the stuff you love about Metal Gear is just so anime esque. Um, and that's why people enjoy that genre of like animation. So, uh, <laughs> and Kojima's like, I like anime, so I can't make Metal Gear. But how can I make, what if Metal Gear was darker, but still equally anime? Okay, right. So I got this game called Death Stranding, and there's this goo. Just right. stick with me here. <laughs> and just the hot and, chicks in the show. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, okay. Look, we don't got enough days in the, we have enough hours in the day that go on about quiet. Okay? Let's <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, Death Stranding games. Death, games. <laughs> Death, Str Death Stranding is definitely like, like I like I got to the point in the game where I was like, okay, I'm carrying my, I'm carrying my dead mother who was the president wrapped yes. in like a thing, and I have to get to like a crater before she decays enough where the death will kill everything. <laughs> And I'm like, try, I'm like doing this. I'm trying to balance. I'm like, this is fucking crazy. The craziest reveal or announcement trailer without context for me at least for now will always be the death stranding 2 trailer i've never played death stranding 1 is the baby an octopus you don't know how the fuck is going on <laughs> and that fucking revealed guy had a dude. guitar gun i'm like whoa like, fucking van like, halen motherfucker <laughs> he looked into his eye and there was a baby in the eye and then inside the babies there's a squid and i'm just like i don't I don't know. I mean, Kojima, you're a genius, but you, 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 I know you, I know Kojima never puts context to his Instagram photos, but can you like put context <laughs> to like what the fuck I'm watching, dude? I don't know. I don't, how that, I don't know how the movie's gonna work. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm like, you guys want to make a movie of that? Are you sure? <laughs> I like how if they make a movie of anything Kojima touches, especially Death Stranding, the notes will just go, just deal with it. The actor is like, so wait, what about just go with it? Just deal with it. We move on. We're going on, but but oh, again, man. to to this point with with Melgar Saad, on a side note, can you just imagine being like one of like the regular like troopers hearing the same intel briefing that Snake's getting? So it's like, yeah. okay, we got they got they got a B guy, they got a vampire, and you're just sitting there like, dude, I should I should have just stuck with the regular fucking army. Like I I could have been in Coast Guard, and now I got to fight a vampire guy, and he's only a beast. <laughs> <laughs> you're just sitting there regarding life decisions, dude. Sorry, I don't know. Oh shit! Uh, was there anything else that we missed here? As far as we caught up on Xbox showcase, um, we can't compare how it is to Sony. I got my Metal Gear Solid from, stuff uh, off. From Software sent a memo uh, where he uh, the front uh, Miyazaki and From Software sent a memo CC'd everyone with the meme um, from Wolf of Wall Street. 
and hey, hey, got and it's like, hey, this is all of you. And it's like, I'm not fucking going anywhere because they're not laying people off. So, yeah. So with all the layoffs going on, they're continuing to go off with unfortunately more expected. Uh, another W for from software. Um, they had a they had to clear their desk of the dozens of game awards they've won to send a memo that says we don't want, we, we don't plan on laying people off. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think that's a bad move, man. Like, I, I, it's like, why do they feel the need to do that? It's just the internet, bro. I mean, companies have the ups and downs, right? I'm not saying they should lay off people, but if something happens where they have to lay off somebody, somebody's going to find that post, you know, five, six years from now and be like, yo, what happened to this Miyazaki? Well, the confidence is like, you know, you just given the internet ammunition at that point. Uh, but kudos to them for not laying by anybody off. I, I guess people were questioning it for some reason. Like he just felt the need to do it. I don't, I don't know what inspired that tweet or something. I, I think, I think it was still, I think it was still a good move. And I, 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 you know, with From Software, you know, From Software is not cut up on these buyouts. They're not bursting their own bubble like Embracer Group was. You know, um, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't overextend their reach during COVID like a lot of companies did. And now this is them overcorrecting, following them overstaffing from COVID. But um, either way, I either way, I like it. it was a good. I think it was a smart move, smart move from From Software. And I, I get, again, I know we were putting the group chat, but I still say like a lot of the layoffs. You know, success doesn't protect you from a layoff. I um, mean, you know, again, you know, Blizzard, Blizzard, like within like one week of Blizzard announcing they had the most financially successful quarter in the history of the company, it was like a week later they're done. They're done announcing the layoffs. So I think in a culture where, you know, from the outside looking in, it's like we don't know what may warrant a layoff if because the failure could, the bit, the most successful financial quarter could. I think it was just good. I, again, you know, the true given reason of why they decided to do that at that time, not too sure, but at least for, at least when it comes to public, uh, for PR or public, public, uh, public opinion, I think it's just another one under that book. I think, I think for me too, it's like, it's kind of like what the Baldur's Gate uh, creator was saying, right? Baldur's Gate from Baldur's Gate 3, as far as like leverage these talented, creative fucking people, like don't treat everything as expendable and then rush to find you know these other you know these other devs that may not be as you know may not have as much uh stink in the game if you will as far as like experience you know and then expect the same if not better result like find value in some of these fucking people you know move some people around for god's sake like if you have the if you have the marketing money to to acquire somebody and you know, like you have the mar you have the, also the power to just put people in different places in the company. <laughs> like get fucking like make it be smart. You know what I mean? So um, I don't have any problem with it. And I think it's just kind of like I think it's just kind of one of those things where it's just like, hey, like we're making bangers, but we're making bangers because we're leveraging the same, you know, talented people. Obviously, those things are selling. But it's like it's just showing like, hey, I value my employees, and we're just gonna keep kicking ass. You know what I mean? I think to, to me that that seemed like the messaging on my end. Um, but yeah, it is gonna be absolutely. Uh, it's gonna be ammunition if something happens. But <laughs> but yeah, whoa, whoa, guys, that was two quarters ago. That was that was two <laughs> quarterly reports. Okay, yeah. we we, we didn't dipped expect in the red. to be as successful. <laughs> I would have made a suit. We, yeah. we we hit record profits. We gotta let people. Go. <laughs> speaking of oh yeah, speaking of that oh yeah, then also too uh, yeah, it's pretty soon where we need to start bidding bidding on some of these games because I'm running out of games that have points because a lot of my shit got pushed back. Hades two got fucking pushed back. Thank God for the Elder <laughs> DLC. I'm like number two right now, but I'm like out of fucking games. So I'm like, fuck, like we need to rebid on some shit pretty we soon. Do. Yeah, you guys need new shit to, you know, to try to fucking beat me because I'm still kicking ass in that shit. I'm still kicking, <laughs> ass, on, like, I'm still I, kicking ass on the fancy cards. I haven't checked in a while. And, well, I don't even know what's yeah. coming up on my card, I guess. So um, I can... Yeah, I can uh, I can share yeah. here while. Not we're... gonna lie, I got with all the so, PR with all the PR around Outlaws, I got nervous. I'm like, Ooh, oh yeah. shit, because I was confident when I got when I put when I picked up uh, when I picked up uh, Star Wars Outlaws, and I'm like, oh, that's a lot of negative PR in the pricing Dude, and all your characters. I, I, think I knew that like... game was gonna be good, bro. Uh, I just knew it. It still might oh, be pushed back. Oh fuck, drill! Oh fuck, drill! Caught up. <laughs> <laughs> it still might get pushed back. We'll fuck. see. I'm gonna throw a play shit. Oh wait, 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 I got Dawn Trail coming out. Okay, <laughs> let's go, boy. Um, <laughs> like, okay, I'm good. Okay, I'm good. Um, damn, and I only got like 
I I need more games. I only got like three more games. That's what I'm saying, bro. I'm 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 kind of in the same that same boat. So just to, just to go over it here traditionally, uh, Arthur is uh, Mr. Dick Rod Game Pass. He is leading the path here. <laughs> Uh, 71 total fantasy points, uh, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, you got 25 for that, uh, Princess Peach Showtime, you got 5 points, Homeworld 3, 9, Pepper Grinder, 9, Alan Wake 2, Night Springs, 13, and Suicide Squad, Kill Justice League, you got 10 points for that counter pick that you did, um, uh, so kudos to you on that, I am still counter picking your Star Wars Outlaws, I still think that it's something they're gonna say hey guys we're just gonna push back just it's just january january we gotta make it look prettier, we make it look prettier. <laughs> Fuck, you're yeah. right she's kind of a butterface we got a dollar back <laughs> yeah. that, that last trail you did not see her face at all bro <laughs> <I know. laughs> it was just over the shoulder bro <laughs> yo, yo that chick clearly has force powers if she could knock somebody out and while wearing a fucking helmet with a bare fist sorry <laughs> <laughs> sorry out, if you don't know what I'm talking about, real quick, the stealth attack in Outlaws is this woman with a this like 110 pound woman with a bare fist punches a stormtrooper in the back of his head with a helmet on, like knocks my cautious. Like, I don't know if you guys ever punched something lately, like in your 30s. <laughs> don't. <laughs> um, um, for sure. Oh, go ahead, Church. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was say for for, uh, for I'll name this later. Uh, for Church, you got Senior Saga Hellblade 2, 11 points. I think the team's still together, so congrats on there. <laughs> Nobody laid right. off as of yet. He's like, nah, you guys give me your points. Fuck off. I don't care. You give me my you got me double digits. I don't give a shit what happens to your future. Yeah. <laughs> Bind the theory. Uh Hollow Knight Silk Song is still on the way. Uh, you know, no points there. Obviously it doesn't come out yet, but still, you know, well, waiting for that. Indiana Jones create the circle also too. Should be some good stuff there. Uh Hell Divers too, of course. You you that was on your card, so you got thirteen points there. I I should. I feel like that should be higher, bro. With all the critical acclaim, like it that should game, be higher. it should be higher. Because because it was high. like it was like oh, it's pretty good, and then a week yeah. later, this is amazing. amazing. <laughs> like it was. Yeah, if that shit wins game of the year, like I'm just saying, bro, I, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I like, Yo, fuck that. That's be fucking like twenty, bro. Yeah. Yeah, you should get more points for that. I agree. Yeah. Um, Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League. Uh, negative 10 points on that one is the counter pick. Uh, Stellar Blade, you got 12. Uh, MLB The Show, you got 10 points there. Death Stranding, uh, you you got the extra 5 points because you counter picked that it was not coming out this year, and it definitely was not. God damn it. Um, and yeah, still plenty of spaces to add some more stuff for the bid. Uh, you're at 41. And uh, myself, Dragon's Dogma, 17 points. Hades 2 fucking push back to next year and it's already the critic claim is like 90 um demonstrated to push back so i got fucked there uh rise of ronin seven points plucky squires have come out yet so hopefully that can give me some good points there uh unicorn overload 18 points and then elden ring shadow ear tree 28 points 94 Oof. uh pretty solid there star wars outlaws i am counter picking obviously leaving me at a total 70 points so it's still technically anybody's game because yeah. there's a lot of slots to be filled and uh depending on the bids you know uh pretty fucking wild so that outlaws counter pick got me nervous now <laughs> no bro that's good it's gonna be a good game you tripping like yeah yeah it's it's gonna be a Sasuke with Star Wars. You'll be fine. And you can land uh, into the planet, right? You know, like there's a little cinematic as far as like actually landing, yeah. landing. But at least you can drive. Beautiful into loading it. screen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I'm are we my, waiting like, to do another round where we just pick games together as a collective, or yeah. can I still? Be, okay, so no, don't pick anything next weekend. Just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, go back you. in. What the fuck you took me? <laughs> so hey, baby, we didn't we didn't specify. <laughs> Yeah, let's do that next week if you're cool with that. You know, just get it over with. Yeah, like halfway. That'd um, be dope. That'd be dope. Um, let's see. Oh, so I uninstalled Suicide Squad. That game is over with. Um, oh, <laughs> uninstalled. 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 Just I hadn't played the game in a long time. I, I still stand by my review of the game. I think it was fun to play for the campaign. But in my review, the live service, I said, yo, this just seems shaky and has been nothing but shaky. Even with season one is coming to a close, just, you know, they were doing developable weekly updates. They stopped doing that. They're not going to do that going forward. They've been releasing content late. It's just, it's just not happening. Um, it begs the question, well, 
I just don't know what they were doing for years. It, it's to the point where I thought the content will come and there's a question whether or not it would be what people want, right? And whether or not it would be good. But now that's to a point where there's a lack of content, which we've seen with games and service games before. But it's like, wow, like not only were you guys cooking this for years, but you guys also delayed the game for a year. So like, what were you doing in the, like during the whole time? I don't know. It's just, uh, there's too many other games, you know, after the Xbox showcase, like I got other stuff to do. So Suicide Squad is, you know, uninstalled. So yeah. with, the, with, the, with the fact that Rocksteady has come out announced that, ha that Rocksteady has since announced, they are working on a single player game. Are we like, what, two months, maybe possibly even like two months or a few months out from like, it officially like or even unofficially just being dead because that's that was a quick i was a relatively what i thought quick announcement seeing how much they'd invested on this being a good game yeah i mean uh possibly i mean i think the power base is so low i just i don't know if they're finishing off the year with the story that they have just to earn money it, it depends like if stuff is already completed just release it try to make some money off the scans while you can because how much you just releasing stuff you already have. It's already completed. But if they have to still make stuff, nah, I think we'd like two months away. So, I mean, I think I'll, yeah, I think by September this game is closed. Uh, I think we I'll, get season two, and then at the end of season two, it's closed. Yeah. What do you think of the core mechanic that these seasons are based off of, quote unquote, just reskins of the final bot, the final Brainiac boss? Like, what, like, like, let's say even if, like, I'm not saying the boss rates are good or bad. What do you think, like, if, like, because they have announced it, like, pretty much, like, every se like every season's boss is going to be a different Brainiac. How do you, how do you, how do you feel about that? Well, I was, I was hopeful going into it. See, I, I play Monster Hunter a lot, and Jura, I don't know if you play the game yourself, where you face the same boss over and over, and there's harder version of the boss, there's like a tempered version of it which they do more damage, um, the resistance against some uh, like certain effects, and they have maybe new moves, which makes the fight more engaging. So it's like it's the same boss, but it's different. You know, it used to do, you know, poison damage. Now it does sleep and it has more moves. So I was hoping so that type of variation and I could get behind it. That is not the case. It's literally the same boss fight in this game. So that that's that's disappointing. Like you run it one time, never no reason to run it again. So bad design on their end. Um, it just, the guns are cool. They feel cool. Like the, the art design is fun. It's just, you know, it's just, it's not rewarding when playing it. It's just, it's too much of grind. And it's the same thing with the multiverse too. The battle passes is just designed to keep player retention as long as possible and not necessary to be fun and engaging. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, I unfortunately, you know, I was kind of thinking that this was going to happen to some degree, shape, or form, but um, I don't know. I just, I would just like, uh, to me, it just seems like, it seems like they, they gave this team a project of where half of the, half of the game component or just the component after making the game, it's something that they're not really familiar with, you know, and uh, it's, you know, it's the wrong studio to have something like this. You know, I thought, and, and, and I always said, you know, the, the, the story and the cinematics seem super dope, you know I mean? And uh, that was like really my engagement around it. And then incorporating this is just like, you know, it's like, well, if they had a, maybe if they had a team that, uh, that was dueling the project and then focusing on that component, maybe we would have had a better result. Um, but yeah, I just think you can't take, you know, you can't take every single successful studio that does single player games. Oh, well, let's throw a multiplayer component over it. You know, it's just like, it's just, you know, it's not gonna, you can't do that. And just so loosely, you know, so yeah. yeah. It's just one of the, yeah, the most engaging thing about the, if you were a fan of the suicide, like what I liked was the cutscenes, the story. It does not remind me of DC comic and the banter between the characters. And once you beat the campaign, any seasonal content, that, that stuff is all gone. So the thing, the plus that it had going for it, it does not exist. It's just the oh, gameplay man. loop. Yeah. So it's just, it's just not worth it. I mean, so at that point, I mean, the season was free. So like I tried it out. I didn't even finish the battle pass. I mean, it, it's just too much uh, for it. 
Joker was fun, but you know, there's nothing to do in the game, so um I just yeah, I moved on to something else. So I think that game is gonna die completely. It's sad it did, but they yeah. didn't focus on what made the game somewhat good. Yeah. <laughs> you you know, get, to, you gave it you gave it at the time of the day more than anybody else, I feel like. I feel like you gave it a very fair like yeah, I'll check in, let me see what are you guys gonna get? You guys you know, it's like so you so, really went to your extent as far as like I'm I'm giving you guys a fucking bone here, like Give me some more content, you know, so. Right. And then I played with friends. So, like, I had a mm. squad of four. So we played the campaign together, right? And everything's better when you play with friends, like what Arthur was saying before. But then what we liked about the game, they just did not deliver anymore. So we just all got rid of it, you know. So it's just time to move on. Exactly. Um, I need to buy a video card and a new uh, monitor, so. <laughs> I, have, I, have one re- I have one recommendation that can bring players back for the next season. Take a break from this Brainiac from this Brainiac thing. They won't do it because it takes time and effort, which they don't have either of. Um, but they should take a break from this Brainiac fucking cycle. They're just they've announced this day one, so it's like demons to a, to a point. Really, there was going to be no big surprise for any of the seasons, which was really odd to be like, hey, you'll hey, guess what? We have thirteen seasons coming up. You'll know the boss for all of them. Cool. Um, but I, honestly, I think either the next season or next season and after that. Take a break from this Brainiac stuff, turn into the Swerve, which is the game's best character, and make, like, the next season or after, like, an expansion or a story on King Shark. Like, just make something where King Shark's the focus of it, because from, at least from what I've seen, he seems to be, like, he seems to be, like, at least the fair character, the, the, the fair character, he's definitely the most watchable, like, that part in the story with the whole ring and stuff. I don't know. I think King Shark's, like, unintentionally the main character, the main, the main character for a lot of people. So they have almost, like, almost, like, a borderline style like oh tiny tina's thing they should do something with you know fucking king you know with king shark like the rise of king shark or just you know all hail the king it's like all about him i don't know yeah i mean that would be cool but they ain't gonna do it no nope. i mean this game <laughs> it just it lacks just content like it's the only live service game where I, the shop had does not have weekly updates for anything they're not even though and the, they pulled an anthem? Fuck, yeah, that's not bro, good. That's not a good sign. No, <laughs> there's nothing at all in the shop. I'm like, yo, like, this is insane. Like, you know, these costumes are already made, though, meaning they exist in comic books. All you had to do was recreate them and sell them in the shops. It's, the homework was done for you already, guys. Like, but nah, it's just, and the team does, does not have anything together. Um, I, I guess it's for the best. I mean, hopefully we get the Batman Beyond game going forward, but yeah. Yeah, that's, that's that what I want. Uh, well, that was, well, actually, we knew about that, and it was canceled. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, Give and it to another la- studio. <laughs> the last thing is uh, Overwatch 2. Been playing that a lot. Um, still pretty good. This new season's kind of a low time. Overwatch is kind of like in an interesting state. Um, it's, I don't know. I, I think the content... It's an interesting game. Revolves around skins, right? No, it's- sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Well, that's the thing. There's always skins and there's new game modes. And the new game modes they they introduce, they only it's limited. So last season we had this mill watch, which is basically they took like a subset of heroes, gave them all new abilities, and you can play it, but it only lasts half the season, and they took it away. I wish that was a permanent game mode. So it, they're like two steps forward, two steps back at the same time. Like, they made a lot more changes to the Battle Pass. It makes it even more friendlier, and it's the fastest only thing ever changed. It's more rewarding. I just uh, wish the game modes would stay more. Like, they did this cool thing also, like, uh, community creatives. They took the most popular streamers um, and they basically redid all the heroes in this arcade mode, where they gave them all new abilities for every single one for tanks, uh, damage shield support they just have everything new and you can play that game mode but it's not going to be a permanent game mode so they add cool oh, shit sorry. into it but it's just like yo like just just keep it in you know like roadhog can like you Pause. know hook on the side <laughs> of buildings it's just it's just kind of it's just kind of weird um I think next season would be better where they have actual new game mode besides just the hybrid or payload this is new thing called like uh uh rush um, it should be a lot of fun, but um, I still think it's worth checking out. I mean, I got a full squad of like eight people playing the game, so I think there's a lot more people in my friend group playing the game now than it was. So I think it's still on a resurgence, but they still need to get the footing a little bit. So, 
Yeah. I, hope, I hope Rivals takes notes because that was one thing towards the end of Overwatch when I liked. Because Overwatch 1, towards the end of it, when they, you know, after New Overwatch 2 was going to exist, all these crazy game modes, they just kept in. Like, you know, um, you know, again, Overwatch 1, we talked about this. Overwatch 1 vanilla was like, you can pick whoever. You pick a team of five Genjis, fuck it. You want five Genjis. Now, you, know, you might find yourself constantly losing, you know, missions like payload and shit because no one's on the payload. And then they eventually forced it to be like, no, you need two healers, you need two tanks, you need two damage, stop fucking around. But they kept that mode in where they eventually, well, they eventually, but they, they put it back in. They were like, hey, you just want like vanilla Overwatch of crazy, you know, crazy mode? Just do that. So that's unfortunate that they still, they, it's like you said, two step back, one further, like, hey, we got this new mode, but it's going to be gone. That's, that's unfortunate. You can't yeah. like filter that search down the road. Yeah. They still have the no limit game mode that you're talking about. But like yeah. the community community crafted one where there's creators are doing it and just changing every character, like it's like it's not a small feat, right? They changed 40 characters, they changed all the heroes, new abilities. Um, it's pretty cool. I just you know that that goes away, you know, July 18th. Like, will it come back? I, I don't know. But maybe maybe this is a test and every season they get different creators to you know, make something community crafted and it keeps it fresh over and over again. So I don't know, more to come. That's, so. that, that's like, I'll say that, you know, recognizing that a lot of the community crafted stuff is, you know, some of the most fun part of the game right now. That just, you know, I won't go down the road too much, but it, it reminds me of, you know, when Halo said, oh, the Forge, which was one of the best aspects of all the previous Halo games, of all the community made fucking maps, like, the, you know, the classic one, you know, capture the flag, yeah. you throw up the hill with all the, with all the fucking Jeeps, being all the fucking Warhawks being thrown at you, and you're like, oh, fuck, because of all the Forge missions, all the Forge different types of maps and playlists. Um so again, it's just weird. That's another thing where how Halo is like, oh, the Forge, yeah, they'll be here like maybe a year. And with Blizzard now saying like, oh, hey, this community mode thing that everyone's loving, ah, uh, don't get used to it. That's unfortunate. Well, they did. They just brought it back this season, so this is the first one. So the okay. Mill Watch they took off, but this is like a new introduction. So I hope they keep it. Got it. Or do changes every season. We'll see what happens. Um, but it's. It's positive, like they're taking the feedback, like Arthur suggesting, and they're implementing it, but it's not permanent. But like we'll see how it goes. And then if it's positive, maybe it's like that uh, you know, crawl, walk, run type of scenario type of thing. But yeah. Uh, upside downside, it won't surprise me to see a lot of changes or like significant popular improvements coming right around before rivals drops. Again, competition, you know, competition breeds creativity. So I think I think it'll be in there and like really see how this stuff goes as as rivals gets more and more traction. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, I think that's gonna wrap it up here for the Gamers for Life podcast. Uh, glad we got one in here. Uh, of course, each and every time we want to discuss video games, we will. <laughs> so we'll have to see what happens here coming up. Uh, but until that time, of course, thank you, Church. Thank you, Arthur. And I'm one of your hosts, Jarrell. We'll catch you guys next time. Come on.